Hello and welcome to RegoFix Tech Chat. My name is David McHenry. I am the Engineering and Technical Manager here at RegoFix USA. Over the next two videos, I want to talk about a problem we encounter on a daily basis. And well, that's how do you preset an ER collet chuck. Most collet chucks you find on the market today have backup screws in them, and customers like you use those backup screws to preset your tool length. But what's the effect? What happens? So in this video, we are going to go through and show what happens to the torque when you have your cutting tool resting against that backup screw. In video two, which will be the next one we show, will be what happens to the TIR. From both of these videos, I hope you gather how best to preset your ER tooling and the effects you have by not doing it correctly. So here we are over at our Torco block that we're gonna use for the assembly. And I have an old RegoFix tool holder that has a backup screw thread in the inside of it. So first thing we are gonna do is we're gonna take that large backup screw that you would normally take your cutting tool and butt up against. And we are gonna assemble that into our tool holder real quick. Just drop that in, thread it down into place. Now on the first measurement, we're gonna drive that screw pretty deep down into the tool holder so that the cutting tool, or in this case, our torque pin, does not hit the, uh, the backup screw. So take our collet, assemble this, and then again, using our torque block, we will torque it to 100 foot-pounds. Then we'll walk over to our torque measuring device and get a reading for this tool. And it's as simple as that. So let's go to our torque device and measure the results. For those of you that haven't seen previous videos, this is our torque measuring device. The torque measuring device was designed and manufactured by RegoFix Switzerland for our application here. It is a simple worm gear drive. I turn the handle here, it rotates the spindle, which holds my tool holder and my torque pin, and the resulting slip force is measured by our torque meter here on the end. Pretty simple application. So let's take a look at our tool holders. So just to recap, this is our tool holder with the torque pin not touching anything and that same 100 foot-pounds of torque on the nut. All right, let's see how this tool does. Right at about 90 foot-pounds. For this next round, we've adjusted that backup screw up quite a bit. And as you can see, our torque pin is now resting on top of that backup screw. It's not seated all the way down. So now, let's put that same 100 foot-pounds of torque on that nut and see what result we have with this. Let's go measure it. Let's go ahead and put our tool holder in where our torque pin is up against our backup screw. Let's see what kind of torque loss this creates. Right at 70 foot-pounds. So a significant loss from our standard collet with it all the way through. That quick demonstration showed about a 22% loss in clamping force. So for reference reasons, let's say 25%. You've lost 25% of your clamping force just by letting your cutting tool press up against your backup screw. A lot of times that's gonna result in a spun tool, bad TIR that we'll show in the next video, and other tooling problems as you're doing your machine application. So, what should you do with your backup screw? And how should I preset my tool length? Well, as far as the backup screw goes, let's just get rid of it. Move on to some other, other way to do it. How is that? Well, every shop that you go into, everybody has the little rulers in their, in their pockets. They have their calipers. That really is the best way to preset your tool length from the face of the collet to the end of the cutting tool. The big thing to remember is make sure you have that minimum two-thirds bore length that you are clamping onto before you torque that tool down to the proper torque specs that we've covered in previous videos. 
So what's that look like? Well, pretty simple. You're gonna put your tool together and you're gonna get it fairly hand tight. You're gonna adjust the length you need measuring your projection. Then you're just gonna clamp it down enough to hold it. It doesn't take much force on that nut to hold the tool at the correct projection length before you take it to your Torco block for your assembly. Fairly easy to do. In next week's video, let's take a look at what kind of TIR loss you have. Again, thank you for watching. My name is David McHenry. This is Regofix Tech Chat.